Hi, welcome to another episode of Cool Outdoor Stuff. We're in a, a stream bottom in the middle of Kent County and it's the middle of March. It's a great time to see um, one of our earliest native flowering plants. And the plant we're going to look at today is not usually thought of as a flowering plant. It's eastern skunk cabbage. You can find eastern skunk cab cabbage all the way west to Minnesota and uh, southwest to Tennessee, south to the Carolinas, and then everywhere in the northeast and up into Canada. Um, so let's take a look at skunk cabbage. Uh, the first thing that happens in the spring is the reproductive parts of the cabbage comes out of the ground. Uh, so we have some over here, come take a look. Actually, there's a spot here in this wetland where there's some sand that has gotten washed right onto the surface. And if we look down here, we see this fleshy colored Part of the skunk cabbage that is first coming out of the ground and uh, it forms uh, what is called it is it's called referred to as the spathe and inside the spathe is the spadex which has flowers all over it and it later becomes the fruit so we're going to take a much closer look at that let me actually get one out of here so we can really see it this is this is going to be a pretty good look it's, it's almost impossible to, to bring them up because they have a root system that goes down a foot or more and it's really deeply entwined. So I'm gonna cut this right off here and we'll take a look at this. So here's the, the space with this opening and if we take a look inside, we see the spadex which later becomes the complex fruit and it's covered with flowers. Each flower is about a quarter of an inch across. And there's something else that the skunk cabbage is able to do. Uh, it generates temperature up to 70 degrees. So in the early spring, if the ground is frozen, it still comes up. If there's snow, it melts the snow around it. And the combination of the odor that the flower gives off and the temperature attracts our earliest carrion flies and gnats. And they go in there and move about and that's how the pollination occurs. Later, this complex fruit, um, is, can be eaten by animals in the fall, and the seeds then can be transported. If it's not eaten, the seeds just f end up where they are, and new skunk cabbage appears there. So here, what we have in this area really is a skunk cabbage paradise. There's, there's really quite a large colony of skunk cabbage here. There's one more thing about the skunk cabbage. As it progresses through the spring, it gets a, a much bigger, leafier head than what we already see here. And uh, when bruised, it really gives off an odor. It smells exactly like skunk. There's another thing you can do with it. You can dry these leaves and use them for soups and stews. But actually, I, I don't think I'm going to do that. We'll see you again sometime on another episode of Cool Outdoor Stuff.